what is going on guys thanks for joining me again this is episode three of the happiness advantage book just kind of like my insights and kind of an overview of everything that it teaches in here and yesterday we were starting to go over principle one so if you haven't um checked out that episode go ahead and watch the first and second episode so far it's been really good Today, we're going to um, finish the first principle, and it goes into the daily things that can help you, which is great. So it kind of breaks it down into um, tangible things that you can do every day. And so um, how to improve your mood and raise your happiness throughout the day. So we talked about all the different things about what happiness is and all that yesterday. So today, we're going to be talking a little bit about what you can do on the daily to help maximize some of that happiness. And so the first one is meditation. And in the book, it kind of says neuroscientists found that monks who spent years meditating actually grow their left prefrontal cortex, the part of the brain most responsible for feeling happy. So that's kind of crazy, right? Like these monks are out there meditating and what they found out through um, neuroscience is that their uh, pre- pre- prefrontal cortex is a little bit more developed and which increases their feeling of happiness, which is nuts. Um, and then also studies show that in, in the minutes right after meditating that we kind of experience feelings of calmness and contentment and as well as heightened awareness. And so research even shows that regular meditation can permanently rewire the brain to raise levels of happiness, lower some of our stresses, and even improve the immune functions in our bodies. Okay, so meditation uh, can kind of enhance your brain a little bit as far as uh, being able to feel happiness and then it enhances our feelings of being calm and content, aware, and um, can lower a lot of the stresses. Okay? So uh, there's seven things total, just so you guys know. So that was the first one is meditation and some of the benefits. The second one is, is uh, find something to look forward to. Okay? So one study found people who just thought about watching their favorite movie actually raised their endorphin levels by 27%. So even just thinking about um, watching their favorite movie is like, boom, they're a lot more happy. And then the second part that I really liked is anticipating future reward can actually light up the pressure or the pleasure centers in your brain much as the actual reward will. So if you're anticipating a reward, it's almost as if you're, you're actually receiving the reward. So anticipation is great. So like if that's why a lot of people like in my mind who are on diets, they have a cheat meal, right? Because they're anticipating it's like if I work hard and if I, um, you know, do things correctly, I'm going to reward myself and, uh, the anticipation, it it makes them work for it and, and, um, it helps them look forward to something. Okay. So that's number two, number three, commit conscious acts of kindness okay i'm a huge advocate of this i think if this was spread around more in life we'd have a lot less problems right but some of my favorite things about this section were um, a long line of empirical research including one study of over 2,000 people has shown that acts of altruism giving to friends and strangers alike that's what altruism means giving to friends and strangers alike decrease stress and strongly contribute to enhanced mental health so by, by doing acts of kindness, it decreases stress and contributes to mental health, okay? So obviously, I mean, it's cause and effect, right? When you're giving, you help others, and obviously you feel good. It's uh, the mental health part. And then what I also liked was it says, pick one day a week and make a point of committing five acts of kindness. All right, guys, so top of meditation, top of looking forward to something, Pick one day a week and make a point of committing five acts of kindness. That's cool. So deliberately do something on one day and see how you feel. See if there's any differences, okay? It should contribute to 
enhancing your mental health, which is huge right now because in the world there's a lot of depression and anxieties going on. Okay, number four, infuse positivity into your surroundings. Okay, some highlights of this is our physical environment can have an enormous impact on our mindset and se- mindset and sense of well-being. Obviously, it's like what's around you, the people around you, the places, the environment. Um, if it's clean or not, completely impacts us, right? Studies have shown that the less negative TV we watch, specifically violent media, the happier we are. All right, guys, it goes the same thing with our surroundings. If we're watching murder stuff, if we're watching, um, you know, things that probably don't enhance our lives, obviously we're going to be happier if we're not watching that stuff, right? And it's crazy that the studies also prove that. Less negative TV we watch, the happier we are. Less violent media we watch, the happier we are. That's cool. So if we, if we start to, I mean, if you're starting to feel like, man, maybe I should make a switch, then do it and see if you can kind of feel an impact of your surroundings, right? So that was number four. Number five, obviously, exercise, right? Physical activity can boost mood and enhance our work performance in a number of other ways as well. By improving motivation and feelings of mastery, reducing stress and anxiety, and helping us get into flow. The flow, basically flow just means like you're locked in, um, kind of like a feeling of total engagement. That we usually get when we're at our most productive um, state. So... For me, it's kind of like whenever you lose track of time, when you're doing something, you're so focused, you're, it's not too hard. Whatever you're doing is not too hard, but it's still challenging to you where you lose track of time. That's flow. And, and exercise, a lot of the times, you can kind of get into a flow state. So exercising increases, uh, boosts up your mood, your mood, boosts your mood, um, and it can improve your work performance. Helps you feel like you have more self-mastery and reduces stress, okay? Obviously, exercise is good for you. Okay, guys, so we got two more, two more. Um, Number six is spend money, but not on stuff, okay? This one's an interesting one. Um, From, and he talks about in his book, Luxury Fever, Robert Frank is the author, He explains that while the positive feelings we get from material objects are frustratingly fleeting, spending money on experiences, especially ones with other people, produces positive emotions that are both more meaningful and more lasting. Guys, this is crazy because in a world where we're so materialistic, if you can spend money on experiences with loved ones, family members, they are more lasting, more meaningful. And remember, if we go back to the definition of happiness... It's engaged, it's pleasure, okay, and it's meaningful. So, that's awesome. So, um, spending money on other people is called pro-social spending and also boosts happiness. So, when we go out and do th- kind things for people with money as well, like for me, that's how I show my wife a lot of love too, is I always go get, you know, the things that she likes, like sodas and other things that makes her happy and so it's fun because it boosts our happiness by helping others and the last part of this section number six um, draw two columns on a piece of paper and track your purchases over the next month are you spending more on things or on experiences at the end of the month look back um, over each column and think about the pleasure each purchase brought you and for how long so that'd be kind of interesting it'd be like a little experiment for you Um, write down what you're spending money on how long it actually increased your happiness for it's kind of interesting right and especially in society i'm willing to bet a lot of us spend it more on materialistic things than experiences am i right so that's number six spend money but not on stuff okay and the last one guys we're going to go over is exercise a signature strength okay this is this is one that i thought was interesting each time we use a skill whatever it is we experience a burst of positivity If you find yourself in need of happiness booster, revisit a talent you haven't used in a while. Okay. Even more fulfilling than using a skill, though, is exercising a strength of character, a trait that is deeply embedded in who we are. Studies have shown that the more you use your signature strengths in daily life, the happier 
you become. Guys, so cool, okay? Like, you know yourself better than anyone else. Um, Even your loved ones do. Like, you could always ask them, like, what are my key strengths? When you apply what you know deep inside of you, you're good at, and a lot of times it's helping others as well in the process, you feel that happiness within you. And I truly believe that. Like, for me, what I love to talk about life, I love to, you know, connect with people. I love to see kind of like deeper meanings. I love marketing. Um, you know, I like basketball, the, all those things. Um, whenever I feel like I'm contributing, sharing in my talents, I do feel like a burst of joy and happiness because I feel like that's what I'm meant to do. <laughs> and I think everyone has some of those abilities and traits built into us. So find your key s- signature strengths strengths if you're one of those mopey people that say but logan i don't have any strengths yes you do (laughs) everyone has strengths that not everyone can do you give me one person that walks in the street if i get to know him a little bit i'm like man you are really good at this aren't you i can't believe you do that like talking to my uncle the other day um he loves bowling and i said you know what i am not good at bowling but I could tell he just loves talking about it. He loves doing it. He got his own new ball, you know. He got his new, brand new shoes. And he loves his talent of bowling. Everyone has a signature ta- talent. When you do it, you feel good. When you share it, you feel good. Okay? So I'm just going to go through a small review, guys. Meditation. Find something to look forward to. Commit conscious acts of kindness. Infuse positivity into your surroundings. Exercise. Spend money not on stuff, but on experiences. Exercise a signature strength within you. Okay? Guys, thank you so much for joining me today. Like I said, we're um, this is a great book. Tomorrow, we will be talking about principle two, which is the fulcrum and the lever. And we'll go into that if you don't know what that means at all. So thank you so much for coming on the affiliate movement. And you guys stay happy.